Happy holidays from our family to yours. And I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You know what? Thank God we have made it through another year. And to be here today, this is a reason that we can celebrate. You know, there's a saying that's saying Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, he is. He is that reason for this season. And I want you to take time out today and give God thanks for everything that he's done. Give God thanks for enabling and allowing you to see another day. And that's why in this moment today, I want you to say, God, thank you for allowing me to meet and see another holiday. God, thank you for allowing me to reach another milestone because today, as I wake up, that's another milestone. And we wanna celebrate Jesus today and we wanna celebrate him every day. So on this holiday season, I wanna say happy holidays, wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you on today. I thank God for us being in the place that we can come together where we can uh, be able to share in ministry, to share his word, to share in the gospel, the good news. And you know, you look back over this year, we have experienced so much. 2020 has been a year of ups and downs and you know what, we didn't know which way to go, what things are gonna happen, how things are gonna unfold, but guess what, we are here. God allowed us to come together for another day and I just thank God for allowing us to come together, to be in this moment, in this place. You know, we are here now to celebrate another holiday season. We're here to celebrate what God has done for us, that we have been in a place that, you know what, we didn't know what was gonna behold tomorrow, but one thing we do know for sure, we know who holds tomorrow. You know, today, before we get started, I wanna ask you to do something for me. I wanna ask you to uh, go into your pockets, your purses, your wallets, your digital wallets, and to be able to share an offering with us today. Every year, we do so much in helping people that are less fortunate. We do so much in helping people that cannot help themselves. One of the things in our ministry, our motto is, is that we are people helping people. And today you can make a difference. If you will be so kind to help us by sowing into our ministry, sowing into what God is doing, I promise you that you are sowing into good ground. The Bible teaches us, it says that whatever man soweth, it goes into the ground and when it dies, but once it dies, it brings forth much fruit. I'm telling you the seed that you plant into this ministry today is going to go into good ground and it's going to yield a good harvest, a good return into your lives, into what you're doing and helping other people. So the information is on your screen today. I want you to do me a favor, sow into it now. I mean, you're saying, oh, this is different. Well, it's time to do something different. We have always been challenged and charged to do something in the same way. Now today, let's do something different and let's be ready to give God our sacrifice on the beginning end. We don't need to be encouraged. We don't need to be uplifted. We don't need to get excited to give to God. So today I wanna challenge you. Let's sow and let's do it right now. 
The information is on your screen. You can do it by way of Cash App. You can do it by way of going onto the website. There's another option we have. It's called Text to Give. Text that number that's on the screen and text the word tithe and offering. Either one, tithe or offering. And the information will follow on the screen to lead you to how you can give your offering. Guys, thank you so much for sowing into this ministry. And as you continue to sow, you're sowing on good ground. So now we're back and thank you so much for all of you who sold into our ministry on today because I just say our ministry because this is a partnership and as we come together we do things together and there's more that we can do together than we can apart. I was reading the scripture in the book of Psalms the 91st chapter in the 7th verse and it says that a thousand have fallen on that side and 10,000 on that right side and the Lord delivered them from them all. Do you understand that no matter what you have faced this year, no matter the things that you have went through, all the things that we have faith, faced in this season, in this year, the year of the pandemic, the year of the struggle, but then God said that to those that are called according to his purpose and his, and his will, this is the year of increase. And God has shown himself strong in the eyes of his people that in the midst of why everybody else was losing jobs, why everybody else was going through, God still made provisions for his people. And you go through scripture and you'll find out that everywhere that there was a famine in the land, God always made a provisions for his people. I'm so reminded about this story in the book of First Kings, the 17th chapter. And Elijah was by a brook and God commanded a raven to go in to give him uh, food daily. And he had a brook where he can drink from. And during that season of the famine, and God provided food for him and something to drink. And when that season was over, God now moved him to another place. He moved him to a place where there, there was a widow woman. And he said, now, Elijah, get up from where you're at. The brook has dried up. The raven ain't coming to bring you no more food. But I have sustained a widow woman that is going to give you, that's going to supply what you need in order to be able to maintain in this famine, in this season of lack, in this season of this desert place. And you'll see now that now Elijah gets up from the brook and he goes and he finds this widow woman. And he said, woman, what are you doing? She said, I'm gathering sticks to bake a cake so me and my son could die. And what you'll see what happens next, this is where the miracle takes place. He speaks a word to her life. Do you understand today that you can get a word spoken over your life and your entire situation will change? Somebody need to understand today that all you need is one word from the Lord that will change your life. And this is a message that I want you to take time right now. I want you to share this message. I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channels. I want you to now pick up the phone and call somebody and say, you need to hear this message today. 
But now let me finish this, this text. In the book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, you'll see now that Elijah was at the brook. The brook dried up. The raven was bringing him meat or flesh, but now the raven stopped coming. So now what does he do? He has to leave from that place. He hears a word from the Lord. And I said to you today that you need one word from God that will change your life. And that one word caused his life to change. He went to this widow woman and not only did it change his life, but it also changes the widow woman's life. Because let me tell you the word that produced the miracle. It was the one word that he spoke to her that caused a miracle to happen in her life. And he tells her that the Lord says that if you bake me a cake first, that the cake that you bake, that your meal barrel would never run dry. Now you got to understand something. You're in a place that you're saying that I don't have anymore. You're in a place you're saying this is all I got. But then all you're holding on to is the word. And you're holding on to the word what God has spoken. You're holding on to the word what God has shared with you. You're holding on to the word that God said will take place in your life. He holds on to that word and he shares what God said to him. He gives it to this woman. And now what happens? Here's where the miracle starts taking place because she held on to the word of the man of God. God has spoken to you today and he's given you a word. And this word that he is giving you is going to call a immediate change in your life. It's going to cause things to manifest that you have been waiting. You're saying, God, when is it going to take place? But today I come to give you a word and this word is going to cause this miracle to take place in your life. You know, we've been singing a song in our ministry and this song is saying that this is supernatural and you're understanding what is supernatural. Supernatural is something that you cannot explain. You can't put a word on it. You can't put a text on it. You can't even try to put a thought on it because you only know that it was because of God that this happens. And this supernatural word that now Elijah speaks to this widow woman, he says that the Lord spake to me and he says that if you make me a cake and you would give it to me first, your meal barrel would never run dry. She obeyed the words of the prophet. See, some of us, we get into a place that we're saying that, well, if I don't have a signed contract, if you can't back it up and you can't show me what somebody else has done, I won't believe you. But let me show you something. We will read an article in a newspaper and they'll say that we're promoting a sale at the store. We'll go to that store with that newspaper article and said that your article says that this is the sale. But we would not believe the word of the Lord. The Bible says, bless shall you be in the city. Come on. Some of y'all, I'm talking to some Bible scholars now. It says, blessed shall you be in the city. In, in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it talks about that when you'll be blessed in the city, you'll be blessed in the fields, whatever your hands touch, it's going to bless and it's going to prosper. But we'll believe the report of man, but we won't believe the report of the Lord. And God is saying to us today that if we can trust in his word, if we can trust in what the Bible says, now you read in the book of Hebrews, it says that in the word was upheld by, the power was upheld by the word. And and so the power is produced by the word and the word of God says that those shall by word be that go forth out of my mouth. It should not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish where I sent it. So then when we give God back his word, there's power in his word. So then the power is not, uh, it, it's just, it's produced by the word. So then when we give God back his word, that produces the power. And so then there's power in the word. And now you'll see that Elijah gave the woman, the widow woman, the word. And now what she spoke to to her. Now she act, it causes the miracle or the supernatural to activate in her life. And she obeyed what he says. Today, you got to put your thoughts aside. You got to put what your feelings aside and you got to say, I'm going to obey the word of God. And when I obey his word, it's going to cause that miracle to manifest. It's going to cause that thing, which is supernatural to come into fruition in my life because I am obeying his word. We're getting so caught up that we're looking at the news. We're looking at the negativity. We're looking at the internet, but we're not looking at what what the word of God says. The Bible tells us that in the last days, these things shall happen. Everything that is happening around the world is not a coincidence. It is what the word had promised us, what the word has shown us will take place. And if we're studying his word and we're studying what God is saying, it's going to show us that these things have to happen because it's bringing in Christ's return. Now, this brings me to another point today. When you read in the book of Matthew, the second chapter, and you'll see that now they were believing on that the Christ was coming. 
So then now there was a baby born. And in the holiday seasons, I know we've heard this story many a times, but let me give it to you in a different angle. You'll see that where there was three wise men, you read it for yourself when you get time in the book of Matthew, the second chapter, and you'll read that where three wise men was, was, uh, what, what was, uh, given an assignment by the king and said that there is the Messiah. There is the prophecy is being revealed that there now these Hebrews or these Israelites are saying that their king is coming. Now here's what Herod the king instructs these three wise men. He said, I want you to go and I want you to find this Messiah. I want you to go find this king of the Jews. I want you to go find this new person uh, 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 that the Israelites are talking about. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to present gifts from the king. But what was in his heart was not right. What was in his heart of what he was thinking was not to go present king uh, gifts to this king. It was to go now saying that you're coming in now, you're taking my authority. I am the king of this land. There are people that are not understanding what this season is all about. So then we're looking at trying to give gifts to men, but how many of us really want to give gifts to God? How many of us appreciating the fact that Christ was born in this season, that, pri that we celebrate this season to say that we are celebrating his birth, that this is why he came. This is the reason why we're saying for this season. We have a lot of people saying they have the X and the MAS. They're taking Christ out of Christmas. How can you take Christ out of something that what he died for, that he was born, that we may have eternal life. And uh, years ago, a pastor told me, he says that when you take the X and you put the MAX, you know, there are people are saying that's this short abbreviation for Christmas. But when you look at, when you spell it out, you're saying that this is more of Christ. If you were understanding what MAS means in the Spanish uh, dialogue, that means more. And what we're saying in this holiday season, that we want more of Christ. And if we saying that we want more of Christ, then Christ will come into our hearts. He will come into our lives. He will come into our dwelling places and show us that if you want more of me, it's not about trying to give a gift to those that saying that I just want more. But if you give that gift to me, give me your life today. Give me everything that's in you. Give me your heart and I will give you so much more. And that's what the prophet showed the woman. He said that if you would give me a piece of cake first, if you will feed me first, then you will have so much more. And it's so hard for people to get that into their mindsets. They're saying that I want more, but they don't want to give Christ more. I don't want to, I, I want to get, I have more money, but I don't want to pay tithes. I want to have a bigger house, but I don't want to sow seeds. And this is what Christ is looking for us in this season. He's saying that if you give me more, if you can do more for me, I'll give you abundance. That's why the writer tells us, and it says, good measures pressed down shall he cause men to give unto our bosoms, because he's saying that if you you give to me first, I'll give back to you. And that's what we need to focus on today is our giving. If we can give to Christ, if we can give more of our time, if we can give more of our efforts, if we can give more of our labor and we give it to Christ, he'll give us so much more in return. And that's what I want you to understand today, that Christ wants more of us. And if we can give more of us and we're getting ready to go into, a, to, to celebrate a new year, we're getting ready to celebrate new things that we're coming into our lives. And now I say to you, let's give more to him. And if we can give more to him, he'll give more back to us. The Bible tells us and in Ephesians 3 and 20, he says, and he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to what's in us. That means that what you give to him, and if you can give it to him today, he will give you so much more back. And now you'll see, well, we're going in the book of Matthew, the second chapter, and I want to read this text to you. The Bible says, and I'm going to read from Matthew 2 and 1. It says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from east uh, to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and are come to worship him. This is what we need to be doing in this season. We need to be worshiping God. We need to be worshiping him in this season and saying, Lord, you came onto this earth so that we can have eternal life. So I'm going to worship you. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people of Israel. 
you'll see that now Herod was troubled because he didn't want anybody to take his glory. He didn't want anybody to take his kingship. So what he wanted to do, he wanted to set out another plan to kill our Lord and Lord and our King of Kings. But guess what? The plan did not work. And I'll say that even look over your life today. Every attack that the enemy tried to put up against you, you can honestly say that the plan did not work. And the same example that what happened with Christ, God showed us in our own lives. When the enemy tried to count you out, you can now testify, say that the plan did not work. When they counted you out, you can say that the plan did not work. When they counted you for dead, you can say that the plan didn't work because God had another plan for your life. They could not kill the king of the Jews. They could not kill our Lord and Savior because the plan did not work. That was not the plan of God. That was not what God had in store. And look back over your life today and look at everything that you've been through. Look at everything that you have been exposed to and you can see why didn't I get counted out in this season? That should have been me that was should no longer be here. That should have been me that was in that crazy asylum. That should have been me that had lost my mind. That should have been me that was in that hospital. But the plans of the enemy did not work. They counted you out, but God had another plan for you. And what Herod tried to do for our Lord and Savior, the plan did not work. And you see, he was troubled. He called all of his wise men. He called his chief priests and said, what meaneth this? What is going on? And he says that it is probably Prophesy. I want you to look that there was a prophecy spoken over your life and God said that there is more for you than what you can see for yourself. You can't see today that you're going to be called for greatness. You can't see today that God is going to use you for a special purpose. But what God is saying that what the enemy is trying to count you out, he's trying to use your past and use that past as your catapult saying that your future would not be great. But guess what? The plan does not work. I'm speaking into somebody's life today and saying that what the enemy means meant for bad, God is turning it around for good because the plan will not work. And I want you to see that when Herod could not see that the plan didn't work, he got angry with these wise men. He got upset and saying that, you know what? They tricked me. They, 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 they didn't do what I asked them to do because his plan, his heart was not right. When your heart is right today, what the enemy will try to mean for bad, God will turn it around in your favor. But you got to make sure that your heart stays right. Don't get so caught up trying to be in the world system. Don't get so caught up in trying to be like everybody else. Only be what Christ has made you to be. Only do what you do. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he directs his steps. And what God wants to do to you today, he wants to show you that he wants you to start stepping in the right direction. He wants you to keep your path, your foot straight to know that time is almost over. We don't have time to get into a place where we're looking at things and looking at the world system. What God wants us to do is keep our eyes focused on him. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, it says that I lift up my eyes towards the hill because it is where the hills are at, where my help comes from. And God wants to remind us today, if we can keep our minds and hearts focused on him, that's where our help comes from. And that's what Christ wants us to res reside in today. Not looking at uh, the pandemic, not looking at your financial situation, not looking at what's happening around the world, but look, keep your eyes focused on him because that's where our help comes from. And you'll see that when you finish reading that text in the book of Matthew, the seventh, second chapter, you'll see that the plans of Herod the king could not prosper because God had another plan for our Lord and Savior. He had to be born and he had to be born in a season where we can all realize that this is the season that we need more of Christ. They were believing on the Messiah to come. They were believing on a prophetic word to come to pass. And I will say to you today that are you believing for a prophetic word to come? Are you believing for the Messiah to come into your life? And this is the season where you can get everything that you need. You don't have to wait another day. You don't have to wait another month or another year, but you can get what you need from God today. He came and he was born so that we can have eternal life. He died and he rose again to show us that now I hold the keys to death and hell. Now, because of what, you, what I have been through, it is causing you to go in access 
to everything that I said that you can have power on this earth. The Bible tells us in Matthew the 18th chapter, it says that we have power on earth as we do in heaven. So it says whatsoever is bound on earth is also bound in heaven. And whatsoever is loosed on earth is also loosed in heaven. God is giving us the authority today that whatever you speak out of your mouth, you have the ability to speak it, to call those things to be not as though they are. Don't sit there and allow the saying that, you know what, this is another holiday season. In the holiday season, this is a time that most people get depressed in saying that I don't have a lot. I don't do a lot, but remember this, you have everything that you need in, in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And with that, no matter what you're going through, all you gotta do is say, I'm putting my trust in you today, God. I'm putting everything that I have in you today because I'm giving you back your word. And as I give you back your word, everything that I need, I know I can have. And God wants you to understand that today. Hold on to that word. Hold on to that promise. Because you'll see in that word of 2 Kings, I mean, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, that woman said, Elijah, I'm holding on to what you're saying. I'm trusting in what you're telling me. And so then if I can trust in what you're telling me and I can believe that God is working through you, I know that my meal barrel will never run dry because she held on to a word. And I want to somebody that's watching me today, I want you to hold on to the word because his promises will not fail us. I want you to hold on to a word and say that our Lord and Savior will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. I want you to hold on to the word that his promises belongs to us. And when you hold on to that word, give it back to him and say, God, I'm giving you back your word today. In your word, you told me that I can be made whole. I'm giving you back your word. In your word, you told me that I can have peace. I'm giving you back your word. In your word, you told me that I have access to healing. I'm giving you back your word. In your word, you told me that if I have the faith to believe as the grain of a mustard seed, God, today, I am giving you back your word. And all God wants us to do today is just have that little bit of faith. And that faith, the Bible tells us that we can move mountains. So whatever mountain is in your life, you have the ability to move it out the way. Whatever is stopping you from getting to your promised land, today you have the access to move it out of the way. Because God wants to remind us on today that our trust and our faith has to be in him. And because we trust in him, we're believing in him that what his word says. Lord, I'm trusting in you. You said it in Proverbs like this. It says, trust in the Lord thy God with all of thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Who is him? Is Jesus Christ. And he shall direct your paths. God wants to lead you on a straight and narrow. He wants to make sure that you don't err, you don't get caught up in the ways of this world, but we're staying focused on him. I'm looking forward today. I'm looking forward to what the word of God says. That's why the writer tells us, it says that I press toward the mark. What is your mark today? What goal have you set for your life? And are you saying that I want more of the world system or do I want more of God? What mark are you setting for your life today? Saying that I'm praying that my children will be saved. I'm praying that my marriage, my relationship will be made whole. I'm praying that my body will be healed. Cause what mark are you setting today? You got to start looking forward. And as you start looking forward, I've recently preached a message that what's behind you is behind you. Start looking forward. I don't have time to look behind me, but I am pressing towards the mark. And as I press toward the mark, God, you have greater things in store for me. And God has greater things in store for you today. And he wants you to look higher. Trust in him. And as you look in keeping your eyes focused on him, I don't have time to look at things that are beneath me because my eyes are focused on you. And as long as you keep your eyes focused on him, you can, you will have everything that you need. Guys, I want to say today that this message is such an inspiration to me because we take a closer look at that how we hold on to a word and that word will allow us to get to our promise. We look at how these three wise men came in and they were coming to bring gifts to a Messiah, a King. And that's what in this season we're celebrating. We're celebrating the Messiah. 
was celebrating the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, knowing that God, you came into this world so that we may have eternal life. And God, thank you for what you have done. There's somebody in there out here today and you're still struggling about what you don't have. But if you got Christ, you got everything that you need. When you have Christ, there's no need to worry. All you have to do is access what belongs to you. And that's what I want to encourage somebody out there today. And if you're looking, if you're struggling, if you're in that place, I want to pray with you. And I want to pray that God gives you everything that you need. I pray that he opens your understanding so that as you hear this message today, it's going to cause a change in your life. Father, we thank you for those that have watched today. We thank you for those that are part of this message. And Father, we ask that you understand that this is the season. You are the reason in the season. You have called those things to be not as though they were. So today we speak over their lives. We speak over their families. We speak over their bodies. And Lord, we cause blessings to come. Lord, we cause understanding to come. Lord, we cause increase to come. And Lord, we speak the supernatural manifesting in their lives in the name of Jesus. And we thank you from everybody that is listening, that has tuned in on today, in Jesus' name. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here, right here at Living in Victory. And we just thank God that in this season, we can thank God that, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for allowing us to be in our right minds. And if you're watching and if you're listening, God is giving you another opportunity to say, you got one more day, son, my daughter, to get it right. So today is your day. Don't let this day pass without you getting what you need from God. And guys, I want to give you another opportunity to sow into this ministry, to be a part, to be a blessing. So I'm asking you right now, get your virtual uh, checkbooks together, get your uh, credit cards together and be a blessing to this ministry and sow into what God is doing here. In the holiday season, we do so much in feeding, clothing, housing. Um, we're preparing um, to give away uh, toys and food and, and, and things to those who are less fortunate. And you can be a blessing to help make that happen. And you know what, what you do little or big, it can make a difference. Some of you are sitting and say, Oh, my little bit won't help. I promise you it will. Everybody can be responsible for helping somebody else. I told you before, the motto of our ministry is people helping people today. You can be a help. And the information is coming up on the screen and I want you to do me a favor. I want you to sow like this as your life depended on it. I want you to sow because somebody else's life depends on it. And you can make a difference today by sowing and being a blessing to somebody who can't be a blessing. But if you can do it, you're enabling them to get on their feet. You're enabling them, en enabling them to have a second chance at life. So do that for us today. The information is on your screen and let's be a blessing to somebody in need. God bless you guys. And thank you so much. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. This is the season for Jesus. <laughs> yes. Bless all of you. Yes. And so we look at Jesus is the reason. He is the season. Yes. And he's all that wrapped up in one. Yes. And we thank God yes. for having another holiday, yes. another Merry yes. Christmas. And this year has yes. been a year, but we thank God for everything he has yes. done. You may not believe that we already having a good time. Yes, yes. we are. 2021 <laughs> is here. <laughs>